In today's review, we're going to be suiting up with the folks over at Factory Entertainment as we have a look at the Green Hornet 1 to 1 scale signature edition prop replica of the Green Hornet, Hornet Sting. The Green Hornet television series first aired on the ABC television network in 1966 and lasted for 26 classic episodes. In the series, the Green Hornet and Kato employed a number of iconic prop weapons in their crime-fighting arsenal. Perhaps the most unique of these was the Hornet's Sting, a sonic weapon that could blast its way through anything. Concealed in a telescoping housing, the weapon was sleek and powerful, but still unassuming. Unlike Green Hornet's other signature weapon, the gas gun, or its distinctive car, the Black Beauty, the Sting was a unique creation of the television series and did not feature in the Green Hornet's earlier radio or movie serial incarnations. Before we get a look at this incredible replica, let's first figure out how big it is. And we are going to go from the bumper or the side to the side of the display base in which it stands atop of. We'll stop the tape measure right there. From this side to this side, you're looking at 16.4 inches, which translates to then centimeters as being about 42, 41.7 to be exact. We're going to switch that again back to inches and we're going to take it from the bottom and we're gonna take it to right up to the very top and we're gonna stop it right there. Now, of course, there is gonna be an enclosure. I'll show you the dimensions on that in a second as well. From, from the bottom to the top, if you don't have it enclosed, you're looking at 9.1 inches in centimeters. That works out to be 23.3 centimeters in height. Included with the Hornet Sting, you get yourself a booklet, same way as what we had saw with the gas gun and dart. On the front, we've got the Green Hornet, Hornet Sting Authentic 1 to 1 Scale Signature Edition Prop Replica. Inside a little bit of a read up about not only the series of Green Hornets, but also the Sting itself, the Hornet Sting. It shows us that this has been hand signed by actor Van Williams, who is the gentleman who actually played the Green Hornet in all of the 26 classic episodes. On this side, it shows you how some assembly is required in order to install the batteries. Now, I've already taken the liberty of adding the batteries, but I'll show you again how the installation of the batteries exactly works. Uh, by the way, there's the back of the package or the back of the card there. Factory Entertainment, www.factoryent. I'm going to breathe that. Uh, factoryentertainment.com. Also, to come included with the Hornet Sting, you get yourself a customs, uh, just a little letterhead here. This actually came also with the gas gun. I didn't show you it, but what it basically is telling you is that when this gets to customs, anyone that would ex uh, suspect this to be a weapon, it's saying that this item is a non-functional replica of a fantasy item that appeared in a major motion picture or television series. This item is intended for display only. This item does not fire any form of projectile, and this item is intended for adult collectors over 18 years of age. Also, to come included with your purchase is an important safety and handling instructions. Your Green Hornet Sting replica may be extended by gently flicking the tube to release the magnetic catch, and then manually extending the top telescopic section 
or two, flicking the tube with a moderate force to extend the telescoping section to its full length. Do not use excessive force when flicking open the telescoping section. This may cause the front section of the telescoping section to stick and make it more difficult to retract. Should this occur, tap the telescoping section repeatedly from the tip towards the rear with your open palm. Use moderate force to unstick the mechanism. Do not bang the telescoping section against a hard surface. Improper handling of the sting will avoid will void the warranty. Observe caution when extending the telescoping section of the sting. Never flick it open in the direction of any person or animal. With that being all said, let's have a look at the display base that comes included with the Hornet Sting. Now what's interesting though is it's the pretty much the exact same design of display base that we saw with the gas gun. Also with this being the signature collection, as you can see on the front, it is signed by actor Van Williams. Now these are very limited, I can't stress this enough, very limited to the sense that it's 250 worldwide. That's it. This one happens to be 98 out of that 250 limited release. Again, with the signature right there, Van Williams of the Green Hornet. Caution should very much be made that you don't accidentally wipe it. If you are cleaning the surface, make sure that you're not using any solvents and don't get anywhere near the signature. Any bit of rubbing, of course, can cause the signature to start coming off. And that's certainly the last thing you would want to have. We flip it upside down and we get ourselves treatment to four felt feet including several hundreds of my fingerprints as you can see is an absolute magnet when it comes to uh, fingerprints here so you might want to take a cloth from time to time depending of course how frequently you are moving this take a cloth and just sort of wipe this down from time to time the mirrored surface on the top here also has that same problem it's just it's bound to happen the oil in your fingers especially on the black you're going to see it a lot more once again the website for factory entertainment is www.factoryentertainments which is actually abbreviated to ent.com as for the hornet sting it's housed on top of this clear acrylic cradle it sort of just rests on top of this so one thing that i wish could have been maybe slightly done differently um, if we take this Hornet Sting off for just a second, don't we? we'll get extensively into that in a second. I just want to show you the side of this display. When I put it on the cradle, the cradle, of course, is a clear acrylic plastic. It supports it, but I am worried about long-term use. Certainly, the cold temperature can play havoc with like the clear plastic. And if you are starting to see cracks on this, I probably would not dis advise displaying this too often on the cradle. Now, the cradle is obviously designed for it. A workaround to that is you can also take the, the cradle right off and sit the, uh, the Hornet Sting right on top of the display base as an alternative. Again, I'm sure that the longevity is probably going to be pretty good to hold it. But of course, I... I do worry a little bit that this is being clear acrylic plastic. Of course, putting it on, taking off, putting it on, and of course, long term of having it just sitting on top uh, could be something that would be a bit of an issue for me. And by the way, the only reason why I say that as well is because I've also had clear acrylic things that have held props, and I've noticed over time cracks start to develop in the area in which it's folded around to support the weight of it. Um, Again, it may not necessarily be Factory Entertainment's display cradle, but I do want to just say that I wish that there could have been, at the very least, a secondary piece of plastic right here. Just almost like a, almost like a third, almost like the back of a picture frame. Just a third supporting piece of a clear acrylic just to support the weight upright. Really, you're asking all the weight to be supported right here, right where the curl of the plastic is happening. Again, I'm not necessarily saying that the plastic is going to crack over time. I'm just saying it based solely on the props that I've had in the past have developed cracks in similar places. The clear cradle, by the way, just attaches via two plugs and they sit into the holes right there. So again, really, there's no reasoning. You could very well just leave it off if you're worried like me and then just simply take the Hornet Sting and prop it on top like that. Because of the emerald little uh, jewels here on the side it actually does a pretty good uh, job of supporting it so it's not going to be rolling around 
It's not as impressive of a display, mind you, but that's certainly a workaround if you are a little bit worried about this part right here. And again, it's really just this section here that concerns me. Right around the top here, the spine, if you will, I worry that that could be potentially something that could break. And I don't want to sound like a broken record, but maybe just again, if there was a clear plastic strut right here that went right up the middle, it could have helped support some of the weight that's happening right here. The Hornet Sting has sound effects as well as lights. And uh, to access that, first you need to do is add the batteries. There are buttons on both sides. You may find yourself actually hitting those if you reverse the process of taking the batteries out. Just to show you as well, it doesn't come with a screwdriver, so I'm just using a just a standard screwdriver here. It fits quite easily, and I'm just going to go ahead and take the screws right out. Do it on one side. Make sure, of course, you don't lose those screws. That's going to be a bad problem. And unscrew the other side. Support the handle as well, so when you are taking the screws out. There we go. And take the other screw out. Once that's out, you can then go ahead and remove the handle portion. And then from there, you can access, you're going to have to press both buttons here so that it goes inside the chamber and then you can pull this out. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Once you've taken the tube off, and I've just left it off of this review because I didn't want to trigger the sound effects as a result. Again, you have to push these down and then slide it out from the cylinder to access the battery compartment. When you get the ad, the battery compartment out, the batteries are not included. Well, they're not included in here, but Factory Entertainment includes the batteries, so you don't have to go right out and buy them right away. Three AA or three AAA batteries. They go just into the little side chamber sleeves here. And then when you are putting it back in place, see there's an arrow right there, and there's an arrow right there. It tells you which direction it has to go. So we're gonna go ahead and just slide that back into the spring, push it up, and then snap the battery compartment back into place. Slide this back into the chamber. You'll have to press these buttons down so that they fit through and pop back out through these opening holes. And then you're gonna repeat the step process of putting the handle of the Hornet Sting back in place as well. When it is time, by the way, to put the top half in, you're gonna slide it into the side. You'll see there's two different sides. One side has a hole, a single hole, and this one has three. You're gonna slide it in this way so that the two sound effect buttons are gonna line up to these holes here. Then you're gonna go ahead and take the handle, and the handle fits on this side here and lines up with the other hole on this side here. We're gonna look at the telescopic feature on this as well as the audio effects in a second. Talking a little bit more about this beautiful replica, the Factory Entertainment Hornet Sting replica was created after an exhaustive and careful study of surviving props as well as archival materials to ensure maximum accuracy. Factory is also grateful to Hornet fan and Sting scholar Kevin Gaunt for his advice and insight. Kevin's encyclopedic knowledge of the props and their history was invaluable. As for the replica, it's manufactured primarily from machined aluminum and has working hero prop features that include a manually telescopic mechanism and a fold-down handle, something both of which we see in the series. It's faithful to the original prop, firing sounds, working flip-up check feature, replicating the scene in which the Green Hornet prepares his weapons prior to heading out in the Black Beauty to fight crime. So let's get a gander at the very top of the Hornet Sting. Much like in the series, when he would enter into Black Beauty along with Kato, he would run through sort of a checklist to see what exactly was working and if everything was ready to go. That included loading the gas gun and having a look here at the Hornet Sting. He would flip this dome up and faithfully recreate it here in the prop. There's also the little light up option at the top here. There's a button activation here that when you press it, <coughs> it would give you the very familiar hornet sting sound, a hornet buzzing sound, as well as the light up option. To employ the hornet sting, the green hornet would retract out the handle like so, and he would flick, flick like this, to extend out the telescoping handle. This would extend out full length, and then from there he would be able to hit the activation button on the side here, which would cause the Hornet Sting to either blow open doors or sometimes to shoot weapons out of some of the criminals that they were fighting. And then to activate that, you're just gonna go ahead and press the button right here.
And then once he was done blowing op open the door, he would just fold up the handle and then he would pop this back into place. Now it does slide in place quite well and it stays in there quite well because it's got that magnetized closure. It does only revolve a little bit of a shake to release it and then once it's released you can extend it full length. Again, much like the instructions indicate, you never want to be very violently aggressive with trying to extend the handle by just by just waving it out. Instead, to preserve the longevity of this, I would only be shaking it just enough to release this, release the magnetized closure, and then I would manually extend it. It's just the safest way to go about it and prevents any long-term damage from happening to the prop here. Being that the Hornet Sting is also comprised of aluminum, it also means it's a weighted piece. It feels substantially heavy when you're holding it in hand. Primarily all black, but you can see that it does get the gold accents on the end, one of which being the Hornet check, and then the other one being the cylindrical, the outer rim here of the Hornet Sting, once again fully extended. One thing I also like too is much like in the series, they've given this broad, wide cylinder shape on the very end of the Hornet Sting and decked it, adorned it in this glorious emerald jeweling here. It also helps to support it. It kind of gives it an extra bit of weight when you're holding it on this end, for example. I think most of the time the Hornet was holding it on this end, but again, it would alternate depending on what he was doing in the series. The handle does swing out quite easily. I don't have any problems with it. Also, when it closes off, it doesn't go anywhere too. It doesn't feel loose like it's gonna be dropping out. The top end is a little on the loose side. There's nothing really to catch and hold it in place, but really where he was looking at this, he was sitting in the car and he was holding it upright. So it doesn't necessarily mean that this would have had to have something to stay in place. Um, one thing though, the buttons, both the check as well as the, the sting, the Hornet sting here, are extremely easy to press, especially this button right here. You may find your your, yourself at times when you are grabbing it, accidentally pressing the button and cycling through the Hornet Sting sound effects. Several different versions of the Sting were used during the production of the TV series. These ranged from very basic pieces for stunt or distant shots to more complex hero pieces for close-up or action work. The props also underwent a great deal of refinement and adaptation as the show progressed. Initially a fully functional prop that could be telescoping out with compressed air. That's probably why sometimes in some of the episodes you could actually see the Green Hornet eject or extend the Hornet Sting and you would see a compressed bunch of air that actually would escape with that. This was found out to be somewhat hard to handle, if not potentially dangerous, and so the Stinger was adapted to employ a spring-loaded mechanism. However, that version too also had some issues, and in the end manual version that telescoped with a simple flick of the wrist, as I've shown you in this review, was proven to be the most suitable for rigors of the weekly television series, and of course for the safety of the cast and crew. The manually activated Sting's lasting on-screen appeal was due to no small part to Van Williams, who perfected the handling of the prop in such a way it appears to shoot out almost effortlessly under its own power in most scenes when in fact gravity and finesse are all that are actually at work. Now, unlike the Factory Entertainment gas gun and dart replica that we previously had a look at on this channel, which was released to two versions, a standard non-signed edition and a signature edition that featured the actor Van Williams, who portrayed the Green Hornet in those 26 classic episodes. The Hornet Sting, however, only comes available as the signature edition, which means if you are looking to get this one, your hands on this one, you're going to get the benefit of Van Williams' signature, but it also means that this one is going to be sadly much more limited. 250 pieces worldwide that translates to once those sell out you're not going to be able to get your hands on them unless you try to find them out on aftermarket places like ebay good news though factory entertainment has this currently in stock over at their website for 499.99 it's about 500 dollars now 500 dollars seems a little steep especially during the holiday shopping season if your wallet's already taken a hit factory entertainment can also help by letting you pay in installment plans 166 dollars and 66 cents, $167 that you could pay a month until finally the Hornet Sting is paid for and it can be delivered right to your door. Why not pick this up for that Green Hornet fan in your life or if you're a Green Hornet fan yourself, why not pick it up for yourself? I, I would. Uh, one thing I do like about this one 
Don't get me wrong, though. I like the gas gun in the dart replica. I mean, it was functional to the way it looked in the series, but I got to give props to this one, no pun intended, for being the superior replica. I like the fact that it has the telescopic handle, and I love the fact that it's also got the audio that it has taken right from the series. It feels weighted. And the, the only thing I really don't care for about this, and maybe it's just me being a little bit paranoid, is the clear support stand that they put the replica on top of. I'm sure it's going to last, but I've just had instances with other replicas over time where the handle, the supports in which that's holding it up, has started to crack. I hope it's not going to be the case with this one. I think at the very least, the Hornet Sting is not heavy enough that's going to add a lot of stress to it, but it's about the only thing that I would have said I wish they could have done slightly different. Maybe putting a support, a little support plastic in between the middle of the cradle just to give it some extra added support. Other than that, I absolutely love this prop replica, and fans of Green Hornet may want to add this one to their collection as well. Today we were having a look at the Factory Entertainment. This was the Green Hornet Hornet Sting Signature Edition 1 to 1 Prop Replica. I have no idea how I'm going to fit that all in the title. I'll find out a way. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Factory Entertainment reviews, don't worry, there's a playlist just for you. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below as certainly more videos and great gift giving ideas are going to be coming to this channel before the holiday season is finished. So stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.